the Holy Spirit and living a holy life. Two questions will engage our attention in this lesson. What does it mean to be holy? And what does it mean to live a holy life? We are accustomed to sin. It's our daily struggle. On our own, we can't do much about it. Sin is in our bones, our nature. But is this an excuse? Do we forget that this is not okay? God can't stand sin, and sin can't survive in His presence. Have we lost sense of what holiness is? God is love, and He is holy. How does this work together? God is holy, 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 says John in Revelation 4.8. But what does that mean? The lesson explains it, explains it with the statement. First, God being fully separated from sin. And second, devoted God is devoted entirely to seeking the good he represents in himself. Now, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 16, God personally appeals to us to be holy as he is holy. So, definitely from the statement above from the lesson, we can say that unlike God, we are not fully separated from sin, first of all, and second, unlike God, what is in us is not good, but evil. Mm -hmm. So how can we be holy then? How can we be devoted for the goodness that is surely not in us? God is holy, and we should never lose the respect and feel for what it is. I think that if we are really in His presence, we can't lose this perspective. Remember how Isaiah felt, how Daniel felt, Moses? When you are in God's presence, you are so overwhelmed. You feel so little, so unworthy, so unholy. However, holiness is not only an attribute of God. Christians are called holy, and we are even called to seek this holiness without which no one will see God, as we read in Hebrew 12.14. We can't just claim God's love and then make a fool out of Him. It doesn't work this way. By engaging in the relationship, we are dedicating ourselves to something different. We are being put apart for a special service or purpose. This is in part the definition of holiness. But we also need to change. Because what we are inside <laughs> is not holiness. This is what the Bible calls sanctification. Very often we come to the conclusion that once we know the law, we know what's holy, so we can observe it. We can achieve holiness and how wrong we are. Mm -hmm. The Bible reveals that holiness is a gift. The Bible also reveals that someone has to open this gift for us. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 6.11, You were washed, you were sanctified, and you were justified in the name of the Lord of Jesus Christ by the Spirit of the Lord. So for us, a holy living sits fully in the hands of the Holy Spirit. Let's not deceive ourselves. He is the one who is making it happen. What is our part then? According to Paul in Hebrews 12, 2, we need to fight to keep our eyes focused on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. So, Holy living comes down to where our focus is. What's filling our heart? The lesson defines holiness as Christ-likeness. And this is not something that we can do. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. However, it doesn't happen without us either. It does involve us and our lives. Some of you I can ask also, how does holiness manifest itself? Apostle Paul in Romans 7.12 gives the answer that the law is holy, righteous, and good. Which means that when we live a holy life, somehow our characters begin to reflect the goodness of the law. We're not trying to be law observers. We are expressing our thoughts, our decisions, our actions that are in the limits of the law. And this is what's noticeable. This is what's detectable. If you remember when Jesus 
mentioned about the wind and how the leaves move when it passes by. Hmm. We can make from the observing of the law legalism, but what it should be is faithfulness. God's love enables us. But as the Bible says, when lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold, as we read in Matthew 24. And the lesson concludes that love diminishes when the law is not appreciated. It is a process of growth and change that is done for us, in us. But it also feeds and gets power from the manifestations of this change and growth as our characters and what we do reflects more and more the character of God. And finally, we have to be eager to live a holy life. We have to be eager and to become a welcoming home for the Spirit who's working in us to have the desire of good and the desire to do it. Keeping Jesus as our inspiration and maintaining our admiration of Him as being so loving and kind and wise is the one successful formula of us becoming like Him. Sometimes we can feel tempted and eager to, things, things, to take things in our hands and do great things for God and for His law. But let's leave the Holy Spirit do His work and let's follow His lead.